cheers to episode cheers. 74. Evan, we have the same. Uh, what do you got? I'm, not, I'm, I'm a Yeti guy. Oh, wow. Evan's a big spender. These look really similar, though. I got this as a gift. Did you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm drinking water. I'm drinking water. I came straight from practice, so sorry. I'd be drinking water, but I left it in the kitchen. That's a pretty far walk. Yeah, it's a whole hallway. Uh-huh. Once you get settled in front of the mic, you don't want to get up. No, correct. Well, today is episode 74. Today is Wednesday, my dudes. <laughs> Wednesday. Let's go with chili. <laughs> uh, <laughs> June 1st. June. Wow. 8, 11 p.m. And is it time we as a podcast start asking the tough questions about the Tigers training staff? Pitching coach. Overuse. Where are you coming oh. from? Whoa. Whoa. Evan, you leave Chris Fetter's name out of your mouth. What? You I, praised I, I, him last week, and I think he's the problem. Could be. I think there needs to be questions asked about our trainer. Whoever is in charge of the arms on the team, there needs to be some questions that are asked. Never talk about another man's job on this show. But this is getting a little absurd. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Joey Wentz went down the other night. And if you would have... No one even knew who Joey Wentz was going into this year, but that's how many people have been hurt. I think if Alex, well, I mean, your shoulder, if you went out there, you're you're straight to the IL. Straight. Yeah. Two pitches, yeah. I'm probably, <laughs> if I'm pulling, throwing as hard as I can, max five pitches is probably where <laughs> I can go. Alex gives up a bomb to the, we're hosting, we're playing the Yankees soon. He gives up a bomb to Aaron Judge in, the, in one pitch and then, Giancarlo goes deep and then Anthony Rizzo and then he just walks off with a dead arm after three pitches, three home runs. To Honestly, the 60 I day. would, I'd be too afraid to pitch in the majors. I'd be afraid that someone would just line one off my dome. I would be <laughs> terrified on the mound. Yeah, they'd, they'd probably be going like the most extreme launch angle though, the way you'd be throwing it. Like, I think you'd be okay. Well, I'd be, I'd still be, I'd throw it and basically like run away after every pitch. I'd be terrified. <laughs> If you got an out though, let's like they say like a hit a four hundred twenty foot, four hundred or no, four hundred foot pop out at Comerica Park. That would be the coolest thing of all time. If you well, got one, all of them you got to do is just have someone over swing at it, and miss it a little bit, and you could probably get one pop fly in nine batters. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't happen. Um, because I'd be throwing meatballs. We saw me in wiffle ball. I threw beautiful meatballs for home runs. Yeah, Connor <laughs> absolutely abused you. <laughs> I think I gave uh, up like 15 home runs. Uh, tonight's show, today's show, whenever you're listening, weekly <clears throat> check-ins from Memorial Day weekend, and then kind of the similar thing we've been doing when things are slower, just quick storylines of what has happened in the world of sports. So we got some NBA finals, a uh, weekly update, it feels like, as Alex's boycott um, of the Tigers. How is it Hanging going? on by a thread. Um, I threw in a tweet uh, that might get Evan nervous about mm. Steve Eiserman's coaching search. There's still no coach. Oh, Jenny. Alex, uh, <laughs> been getting to, <laughs> uh, been getting to work early these days, so he's his brain's cooking on the hypothetical trades that he likes to send the group chat. So we got two of those that were facilitated today. And then it's another snake draft, and this one is going to be sports-related of the current Detroit sports players age 25 years old or younger because all this city has right now is selling ourselves on hope of up-and-coming athletes. And then a couple listener cues because people did res- respond to the call today. They got in the form, and I think there's one, two, three, five of them. Um, some solid ones in there, a mix of sports and not spart- sports. All right. Weekly oh. check-ins. <laughs> I think uh, Last Alex must be reading is some. for sure. <laughs> Someone in yeah, the chat. His name starts with a W. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, I say, so I think we, wish we should do for like you guys did last week where I think it flowed better when you guys do the golf. Wait, you guys didn't have golf this week. Never mind. Yeah, no golf. Damn it. Well, that just really took the wind out of my sails. But for future references, I like when we put them both together at some point. So I was going to say do everything but the golf. But we'll take that into further weeks. So for now, let's start with Evan. How was your 
long weekend. You were go-karting. That's the first thing that came I to my was mind. was go-karting. <laughs> yes. Um, this week, let's, let's, last time we talked was, what, Thursday? Yeah, a little late yeah. show, a little weekend. Oh, so, yeah, so Friday went out to uh, Grand Rapids, Jenison. Um, had a tournament out there. Saturday went well. Sunday did not. This team is just... <laughs> The team that we they're faced just kids. No, this team was not kids. There were teenage, like grown men out there throwing to us. We have a couple big kids on our team. Like we look average, and then we have some like smaller kids, and you know, just having like I don't know, age or like puberty hasn't hit. This entire team, like puberty, has hit like four years ago. <laughs> so this scene in Bench Warmers when you just to say, is it the Bench Warmers well, scene? Yes, their starting pitcher Carlos. looked like he could play like middle linebacker for a varsity football team. Just, oh, nice. Not scary at all if you're a little... absolutely jacked. And he was humming in there pretty good. We got shellacked on Sunday, but overall, it was a good time. Um, weather was perfect. Um, got to hang out with the team, a little team bonding. Went to Craig's Cruisers. Senior uh, mystery trip. In 2015, yes, we went there, but we were only for there for 15 minutes. minutes. Yep. Best mystery trip of all time. Worst say. of all time, if anyone's <laughs> listening. Worst of all time. Um, so, go-karts, they have like the electric ones on the inside. And then they have the really gas ones on the outside. Did that a couple times. Great time. They played laser tag. Um, oh, never gets old. How'd you drive? You know, I didn't drive well. I always got stuck behind somebody slower in front of me. There's nothing I could do. And it wasn't like somebody I knew. So I just got like got stuck behind somebody. I couldn't like. So you're no on. Ricky Booby. No, I'm not. I would always get like the one was an old man. And then I he passed like this mom and daughter. And I couldn't wipe them out. I felt bad. So I just, and then one time there was just a young little kid, didn't know who he was, but he just would go so slow around the turns. And I would like slam on my brakes, not to just like T-bone him. And then he would speed <laughs> off. Like he knew how to drive. Every single turn, he like almost came to a stop and then turn, oh, it was miserable. Well, he doesn't have a driver's fun. license, Evan. Yeah, I understand that. Still fun. <laughs> Laser tag. I finished number one in total points. <laughs> Number one in Don't total points for a match. Be, 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 be. tag champion. Um, Jason, Jesus Christ, is Jason born? <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, what did you do? Just hunt hunt the weak links? Um, no. So there was like a home base. I was like going to say, did you camp links. out? There was No, I did not camp. I was running out. You were camping? You no, noob I did not camp. Noob. I did not camp. Camping noob. Um, did you have a grenade camped. launcher? So there's like a home base and there's like a little like, I don't know, just a sign, basically a light that you could shoot, like another team's home base that they were supposed to protect. They didn't. We were just sitting there shooting Rookies. It. Get more points. Um, so you cheated the system. No, the, we no, had to game. watch a 10-minute like, like video on how to play laser tag before so we got say, to I answer. think we've all played laser tag there before. It's a blur for me. I was running around. <laughs> I kind of remember the whole base thing. So. My my move, I would just follow the you know the kid in your class that doesn't know what they're doing, just walk behind him, shoot, and then wait till their vest to reload, and then beep, and then like to <laughs> beep. yes, um, make him rage quit. Got to hang out with, got to see Carm on Saturday night. Um, got to see him on Saturday, Sunday. Was driving home, just absolutely furious that we got our butts kicked. It was hot. People Those- don't know how to drive. I, I realized my biggest pet peeves all involve driving in the left lane. They all do. Mm-hmm. Can confirm I did call Evan on this drive and he I had a couple people a bugging me to turn around. They're like, no, dude, you're only an hour away. I'm halfway home. I'm not trying I around. looked at the maps. You were only an hour away. Correct. Some of us wanted you to come. I didn't forget have my about car. your baseball tournament. I had that my was a fair point. car and Thank a work you. shift. You you honk any at anybody on this drive? I did. I did honk. I did flip multiple people off. <laughs> I did do one of these. I've, like what I said, everyone doing? was in a horrible mood. It's just when you're in the left lane, you got to go. Like, go. Yeah. And, like, the, the awareness of, like, hey, you are backing up, like, half of the state of Michigan right now. Like, get over. You can eventually get back over, but no, get over. Um, Monday went golfing. Played like crap. <laughs> Where'd you play? Uh, home course for free. I'm, I'm broke. I'm officially broke. Um, <laughs> didn't didn't mean to bring it up. My bad. Yes. Uh, any good was... golf? Free golf though. Any good? Any good golf? Stories, like yeah. Any... Corn broke his club on the last hole. Oh no. He came to. 
in he frustration. Came. He, he came to Tecumseh? He was here because of his family things. Yes. He so how did you see him Saturday? I saw him Saturday because he lives in Grand Rapids and he came but by to he hang out with all the Sunday. Then he went home on Sunday and I saw him again. We're talking driver. What do you do? Snap it? <laughs> uh, no, we're talking, talking eight iron in the fairway. Oh. Frustration. Try to hit the ground. Um, got too much of the cart. Snap the shaft right at the Oh, head. the cart. Wow. Dave's not going to like that if he's listening. <laughs> I know. I said, oh, hey, that's geez. a nice cart, man. He drives over and he's holding his club. And I wasn't even like looking at that. I was like, hey, that's a nice cart, man. He's like, yeah, I know. And he's just holding his shaft that's broken. Does he his... play golf? Yeah. He golfs like, like just as much as. Not, I wouldn't say just as much. He golfs well. He's a scratch. So he's like a good, decent golfer. Plays a decent He's amount. just as good as me. All right. So he's better than like Colby already. It's not like he's someone that just like plays twice a year and and has no reason to get that angry and snap a club. No, he's very good at golf. What do I feel like that was directed at me? I've never snapped a club. It wasn't, Grant. It's okay. weird that you took it like that. <laughs> yeah, I guess if the shoe fits. I'm just saying if just a random guy plays like two rounds a year, goes out there and is screaming and snapping clubs, it's like, well, buddy, no. you don't play. No. Wearing jeans. Went to the Memorial Day Parade in Decumsey. I think Lit. I think everybody was there. Um, saw you there last year. Yeah. Mm. Did. Tough, tough, tough subject. Got the the mini flags out. I didn't get one. I wanted one so bad. I'm sure you don't have any in your house. Um, would they would they run out? <laughs> they were handing them out on the other side, and then she just like stopped. She like stopped. She was in a golf cart, stopped and handed like people she knew, and then just drove past everybody else. Politics. I know. Bitch. Um, and then today, great time. Alumni scrimmage versus the varsity team. First ever alumni team to beat the varsity team. Six nothing. Oh, One wow. hit. Who pitched? Uh, Muck, coach, manager, and player Muck. Um, what is this, uh, like a semi pro? <laughs> yes. He started on the mound, tossed two good innings, got out of the jam in the first, had bases loaded, no outs, got out of the jam. How legit we talking was this game? Like, very serious. I took it very seriously. <laughs> we took it very seriously. I mean, the varsity guys weren't pitching like their top players. They were just pitching like brought up kids. We were facing like a sophomore, I think. Of the world. Whoa, beep, beep, okay. Beep. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to get some context for myself here, Grant. Um, yeah, so. I mean, so- the hit a bomb. He was th- our third batter, and he absolutely just nuked one. I like this. Doesn't he play so. college baseball? You guys Correct. had it sounds like you guys had a nice ah, little lineup. That's not oh, we totally at, fair. You guys had a the, good team. We were athletic. <laughs> we had 15 guys show up. What oh, position do you play? You start I second bet. Yeah. Start on this team? Yes. I'm, I was the oldest person on that field. Who's the bottom <laughs> of the roster? Uh me. I my bad last. I bet 15th. All right. Well. I drove in around. Never known for a hit. Two outs. Ba- uh, guy on second, full count. Just drove that bad boy right back up the middle. How hard is it to go back into live pitching if you haven't hit in like it's, several years? It's not that bad because the kid wasn't like a varsity starter, so it was like decent. You could stand in the box. Um, however, it's just like a fact like you don't want to embarrass yourself. So like who's my that, whole thing was like not striking out. Who's that kid from Bedford that was really good? Went to Michigan. Jackson Lamb. Jackson Lamb. Grant, if you got in a box with him right now, what's happening? Alex, when I was in the middle of playing baseball, I almost had poop running down my leg facing him. <laughs> like, <laughs> I grounded out to second base and felt like I hit a home run. It's that scary. Yeah. I will it's say- It's scary. It's just intimidating. And Grant, like, there's nothing pooping. you can physically so, down do. his leg. He's also like six, he's like six, eight and on a mound. You look, I felt like two feet tall like against him. He's That's why I fell against- in, in minor league there baseball, was, and there was like bleep, there was like four um, MLB scouts standing behind me too with radar guns out tracking this kid at the old Tecumseh Field. It was very stressful. I will say, I think I played, I think I played in two of the alumni games, and I would always try to just like hit bombs. Like I, I completely would change my stance from high school and just try to say, like, "Oh, you're Grant. What would happen if you like swung like this?" earlier in your life and then uh, if i got two strikes i would just choke up i don't think i ever did anything good in those games i was just there to basically try to throw a runner out if i was daring one of the kids to steal and just try to throw them out that was my only highlight 
Jackson catching, Lamb was all Big Ten. I will tell you this. Catching absolutely sucked in that. Being the alumni catcher stinks because <laughs> that you lose pretty fast. And I think in the two that I played, we still had Sam. We had Sam and Muck, two guys that can throw pretty hard, especially yeah. Sam. And I'm like, well, this is this isn't like a fun, relaxing game. This is a torture chamber. <laughs> this is a lot and, of uh, name bleeping going on. No, just first names. And the beauty of that, too, though, the power you get is do they still let the catchers be the umpires? Because that gets very testy in those no, games. No, uh, Will was calling strikes. Mm, that's good to have because I would ring some kids up and they were not happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Alex, would you like to go next or would you like me to go next? Sure. Sorry, I was just doing a deep dive in Jackson Lamb. Got drafted twice, but he retired. Injuries. Mm, hung him up. And now he's in the fire department in Toledo. Good for him. Wow. All right, what did I do this weekend? I went to the lake with Drew. What and lake? His, and his family, Lake Allegan. Nice. Um, pretty that's chill almost, lake. That's kind of like almost your name. Mm-hmm. Allegan and Alexander? Like Alex Gillen, Allegan. Like it just kind of flows huh. the same. Evan's on the same page as me. You I overthought know. that Nobody one. Nobody calls you Alexander. That's not your name. <laughs> yeah. Just thought that was closer than Alex. Everyone listening, Allegan. start calling him Alexander. Tweet at him. <laughs> Tweet at us. Like Alexander. If you, said, if you said Alex Gillen really fast three times, it's going to turn into Alex. I don't just think about my name and think Alex Gillen. I just think about my first name. So I thought you guys were. You do talking. not think about your first name as Alexander. It's my name, Evan. Okay. Bert. How many times did you use it in school when teachers asked everybody, what would it's you like not- to be called? Did it's my it formal as- name. What do you mean? I, I prefer well, Alex. I'm sure. over it. Talk it doesn't really matter what I prefer. No one calls me Alex. Except Grant. I, th- I changed it. Bert. Bert dog. All right. And I guess dog. I guess Evan, you uh you don't call me. Um Alex, you drank some you drank some new flavors of high noons this weekend. That I observed I did. that from the weekend. Try oh, the I have a hot high take. noon summer. Pack. I have a hot take based off of this. All black cherry flavors are the worst flavors you can ever buy. I believe I said that in my review. I, I you guys were sending so many of you guys seemed bored that I didn't watch half of them. I kind of was like the girl on Drew, Instagram. Evan. We weren't the intended audience for those Snapchats, so it's okay if we skip through them. Yeah, I just but, do, I don't know how people could like black cherry. I think it's disgusting. I agree with that. Black cherry, not my favorite. Drew did say that black cherry was his favorite. So That's weird. Sauce on Drew. Sus. Uh the summer pack, pretty underwhelming. I think Flavors? it's called a pool pack. There was lime, which was decent. Kiwi, pretty good. Guava, awful. Oh god. I heard guava was the best. Based the off guavas the bar from the high noons were terrible. Hmm. Okay, okay. Duly noted. And then uh peach. How was that? You know. It's all right, it's not a huge like peach flavored guy, so I'm not oh, the best I love to peach judge flavored. I Kiwi, love peach. probably the best. I love lime. So, did Any you try the other there? pack with like the lemon in it? Uh, There's a lemon yeah. hydrate out there, and I heard it's like competing with like pineapple. No, it's the best flavor not. overall. I love lemon. Lemon anything is. I think that's a different elite. pack. So there's the pool pack. Yeah. The tropical limited edition pack mm. what's in that one that one is watermelon mango passion fruit and pineapple wait that's, that's the og the original so that's the og i guess limited wait. edition my butt that's been out there wait for no years. i think the passion fruit passion be, fruit passion, passion fruit's, fruit's new normal the original one was in the tropical original edition. one was black cherry pineapple watermelon and, and lime no uh, the little lime mango no the lime no, lime was Man, not lime original. Lime is brand new. I think it was lime mango. is new. No, lime's not new. Yes, lime it was is. an OG high lime noon flavor. Is brand new. Grapefruit. Grapefruit was the OG. <laughs> it's grapefruit, pineapple, black cherry, and watermelon. Yes. Oh yeah, black cherry stinks. And the one I just said was what? What did I just say? Guava, watermelon, pineapple. Watermelon, mango, passion fruit. Ooh, so mango. mango and passion fruit. Seems like they just keep watermelon and everything because it's elite. Yeah. And then I'll we piggyback piggyback off. Original. I'll piggyback watermelon off to the best. I had Topo Chico's for the first time and they stunk. Mm. I've heard good things. In while well, I looked last week on that review or that list <laughs> that Evan was looking at, it was like third. They are bad, dude. They uh, 
I think Marissa summed it up perfectly. They're like, if you left a white claw out on your counter for several hours. They warm? I trust Grant's flavor taste because no, they he were tries cold, everything. But, but they were bad. Grant tried the uh, sours. He was willingly bought a 12 pack of sours. <laughs> yeah. The I like sours? one sip of them. Look, I was like, oh, I those were awful. Oh, if you make God. if you make a bright green box, I am going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just hung out in the lake, rode around the boat, drank some yes. nooners. Yeah, and lake then activities. I also played some golf Saturday morning. Some golf. Where at? Uh, I don't remember the name. Some with who? With Drew. Just Saturday morning. Woke up, played golf because we could. In Allegan or in yeah. locally in Birmingham? In uh, in the Allegan area. I think mm-hmm. Goebbels is what it was. Hey, old Castro, RBI double. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Four nothing. Absolutely rakes. We are a wagon. So, yeah, played some golf, played decent. Much better back nine. Did you get off the tee box? Uh, so, usually my conversion rate off the tee box these days is around 15%. Maybe, maybe less. Tour average. I'd say, <laughs> no. Uh, I'd say I got off the tee about 50 or so percent. So better. All right. But I pull irons, I'm for sure getting off the tee if I hit an iron. When I hit driver, it's really bad or it's really good. Pretty much no in between at all. Hmm. So. Did yeah, you say, not. okay, I'm going to flash back because I just thought of this. Did you say when you were on five for league the other night that you hit the porta potty? Yeah. Just I was now. standing on that tee box on Monday and I thought about that. And that is just about as bad of a shot as you could possibly no, That is the ever. worst shot a human being probably could have. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it is top five worst shots of all time that you could ever hit. Wow. For any and, American. And just to remember this, there's three groups on this tee box that I'm hitting. I'm surprised you didn't kill somebody. Wow. A lady had just walked out of the porta potty right after. I've been awesome. Oh she just opens God. that and just eats one. Someone did make a joke about that. <laughs> Knocks her back in the door shuts. She just threw it down. <laughs> Jonathan Scope, RBI double. What is this? Right, is we don't raking. need this the entire time, Grant. Scope well, is raking. Back. And then uh, we'll double the left, too. Final thing of my weekend. Got back Sunday, sat down, watched the new Obi Wan series. I still haven't watched it yet. Do I? Don't no, you, you don't care. But I'm watching a dozen trivia. That's not shows. What? So it's so much more important. Or Monday, excuse me. Sorry. Oh, those are good shows. Alex, you did something else. You watched something else. It's a homework assignment, though. Uh, I had seen seventy five percent of Top Gun. I watched it again. Don't don't do spoilers. Dun, dun, I haven't dun, seen dun. the new movie yet. I haven't either. I haven't seen, seen it tomorrow. Strange yet. Seen it Thursday tomorrow night, Evan. An I, hour, I can't uh, tomorrow night. I got I'm busy. 20, 24, hour, 24 hours from now, Alex and I will be in the Imagine Palladium, g- getting our brains blown off in the cuddle seats. In the cuddle <laughs> seats. <laughs> no, in our own recliners. I'm gonna have a big thing of popcorn, probably Pepsi or Mountain Dew. Some peanut M and M's, and I might go oh, crazy. Coke and get sour patch. Coke I, I might get sour patch kids. As a, I might go three things and just get crazy for this movie. Save up, save your money, then take some if, cans back. And if you're a kid, <laughs> if you're back a hundred dollars, if you're thinking about going to this movie right now, and you're thinking about talking tomorrow, don't. You better you just staple your mouth you're shut. You're getting okay. a peanut M and M to the <laughs> back of the throat if you open your mouth. Yep, you're whistling by you. It's, it's absolutely. It's Tom Cruise and Miles Teller season. Okay. Um. I watched a movie this weekend. I watched The Greatest Showman for the first time ever. Fantastic. That is a top five movie of all time. It's really good. Let's clap it up for Hugh Jackman. That is, that is a great movie. movie. Great movie. Um, great tracks. I think I called the, the storyline like 10 minutes in or whatever. I was like, he's just going to become really rich and then let the success go to his head and his wife's going to leave him, basically. And that almost happened. But Jesus, yeah. Grant. You just spoiled the whole movie for everybody. I'm probably the last person in the country to see it. <laughs> It's been out forever. I watched it like four times in like a two week span. Give Evan it's Evan's girl some love, okay? Zendaya, Zendaya mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. I wasn't. I watched it with someone else, and I wasn't even the biggest fan of Zendaya of the the, the duo. I they're absolutely fawning over Zendaya in all of her scenes. Um, but yeah, it was a great movie. Good acting, great soundtrack. 
Um, and just newer movies are better. You know, a lot of times like the, the filming's so good and, and clean. So high things about high praise for that. I already talked about Topo Chico. Um, oh, I had a Saturday to completely off of work, completely to myself for the first time in a while. And I did something that I'm proud of, but cost me. I ran a half marathon it on Saturday. It was a psychotic move to just jump into something when you don't really run. 13.1 miles down around the Birmingham sidewalks and streets. And let me tell you, if you saw me towards the end of that, I hope you just looked away because I looked like an old man walk like walking two minutes running 30 seconds just anything i could to get to that 13.1 i think from eight and a half miles on i was dragging it took me two and a half hours two hours and 35 minutes 11 minute roughly. pace right 11 I mean, that's, 11 that's really 11 not bad. mile pace did you like it train sucked. at all have you been running have you no at all? this is that's the psychotic part no, that is a barney it. no that's barney stinson there's only Every, one <laughs> step to, to running a marathon it's run. Name another one. Name another thing you have to do. You, know, you just run. Yeah, and then he couldn't walk for a week in that episode. Um, I think I would say like every couple weeks I would run a few miles. Like I've done, I can do like a 5K, like 3.2 easily. And then the highest I've ever gone was in Tecumseh one summer. I think I went to five or six. So I hadn't cleared six like ever. So you and just doubled it in one day <laughs> out of nowhere. What I was a like crazy move. I walked outside. It was like one. I'm like, the Champions League starts at three. I'd like to see that. So I'm like, I'm just going to run for two hours. And I think I was at the two, I was at the two <laughs> what is mile. Wrong with you? I, I was on my bucket list. I've, well, I always want to run a marathon. Yeah, that's one okay. day in my life. Like, just like train for it first. I know. Like, well, I, run a couple I know. miles, I know. you know, build it yourself up, but just not to roll out of bed. Because, you know what? I got soccer match on a little bit. I'm just going to go run for a couple hours. I was sitting on the boat and I was told Drew and Dave. Because they were sitting right there when you text me. And they're like, does he, he does this a lot, right? He's been like practicing for him. I'm like, <laughs> no, he just walked out there and ran it and just texted me about it. It was the most bizarre thing of yeah. all time. You, you okay? Is everything okay yeah. in your life? My sister had the same reaction. She was like, what propelled you to do this? And I was like, well, it's a bucket list step. I'm trying to get to that, that point. 26 um, miles is what you're going for. 26.2 is a full marathon. One day I'd like to do it before I die. Wow, that's I don't know how me. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to ever do it because I and anyone that runs them, I have the most respect well, if for you start training place. now. You have a you could run a marathon with a uh, Rye guy in October. Your dad's running Detroit, a marathon. the Detroit no <laughs> Ryan no, a different Rye guy. He's uh, really, he's doing one in October. He's doing one I think it's the Detroit marathon. Wow. And he says he's training right now. Training, I don't know how <laughs> uh I don't know how, uh, what do you want me to say? Straight Grant doesn't to need schedule? to train, though. I do. You actually are on miles? pace because you said you went from three <laughs> miles to six miles into Tecumseh, and then you just ran 13. You're on a double pace every Dude, time. Alex, I couldn't walk after. Like, that. Like, that was about going to your limit. Like, that no was my shit, limit. you couldn't walk. I, like, collapsed on a park bench when I got 13 points. I was... <laughs> love I was, to see <laughs> that. How long did you sit there? in the middle of a park. So long. I, I sat on our couch back here, the one over my shoulder, for, like... I watched the whole Champions League game plus, like, two hours. I was, like, four hours just laying horizontal and, like, got up and was just limping around. <laughs> How they feel I was, today? It, it hurts so bad. I ran on like grass. You know that the park, Alex. I would yeah. come back and do laps around there. The grass field with the softball field. I was like, my feet hurt so bad from the pavement. I would just run up and down grass to do like half so a you mile. You were just doing suicides, just like gassers to get the thirteen point one towards the end. <laughs> oh my god! How do your legs feel? Um, not as sore, but they were sore like throughout the whole weekend and then into uh. Into today, I, I like did the Theragun a lot on them, which helped a lot. But yeah, hey, you're nuts. Hey, Evan, you want to go run thirteen point two on Saturday? I might do it right after we get off this podcast at night. <laughs> Please don't one up me. And then after that, I put on um new golf grips for the set of clubs I got from up north that we talked about last show. So they were the jumbos are gone. The jumbos lasted one week. <laughs> did you ever um, even hit the jumbos? Other than yeah, like three that, that, shots. No, I played like the back nine with those when I was up there. Uh, that's a shame. I mean, jumbo's these, hand, these hands aren't these aren't built for jumbo clubs. Um, and then the last thing there, I wanted to make fun of one couple I saw at the lodges in East Lansing 
Um, I don't know who they are, but they were taking pictures by the pool. They were making their third wheel friend, who was a girl, take pictures of them. And I kid you not, this couple took pictures by the pool for a half hour and like was looking at them, like like laying in each other's arms. They jumped in the pool for like a candid. They were then like covering, you know, like the sun and like looking at them to see how they turned out. And it was one of the more embarrassing things I've ever watched like live in my life. How long did your photo shoot take? A minute and a half. It's respect right there. Fair. Yeah. In and out. And we both looked at each other and I was like, I'd much rather be like, never take a photo again than look like that at a public pool in our lives. Cause it was my God. It was, I was, I felt so bad for the girl taking the photos. That is uncomfortable. You did yeah. something uncomfortable in the pool though, that I saw mm. as well. Oh yeah. Well, the Topo Chico's, um, they get you kind of drunk and then you just kind of, you just kind of slip your hands places. You're just Whoa. like, Whoa. how did that happen? You held hands with your girlfriend's foot. Intertwined your fingers in her toes. For a second. Yes. You're when you're making, and you're making fun of really people? Gross. Chlorine, chlorine clears everything. You're making fun of people, Grant? Also, big uh, dad OCD pool energy. Um, shout out to my dad for instilling me pool habits uh, from ours growing up, but... The loudest pool wasn't looking great with some dead bugs, and they had a skimmer, so I just skimmed the whole pool with a bunch of people there. <laughs> respect, I respect that. <laughs> I mean, mainly just in our end of the pool, but like, I didn't want to walk around people because people had their feet in around the edges, but I just like really cleared out our corner because I'm like, I just can't watch these dead bugs float up against me all day. How busy was the pool? Oh, it was packed. I had to like, we had to like wait for people to leave their chairs to get a chair, and then we would just put a towel down on the pavement with your feet in the water, basically. So people are still on East Lansing's campus. Should have went to the Skyview pool. And one chick, one chick was there by herself, blaring EDM music. Um, like she was the speaker. Like there's a speaker war. Who's like get speaker dance? And she we were just like this. And she was like sleeping, blaring EDM music. It was very disrespectful and zero self awareness. She just dumped water on the speaker. There's yeah. a lot of people that don't have any self awareness, and those people are the worst. A lot. Those are the drivers right. in the left lane. Yes. The MB- yes. You guys ready for some sports, some quick sports here? We like sports, yeah. and we don't care who knows. Well, I, I think Evan's got that song. I was going to try to Evan's got to do line. that every single time we switch to sports. It's the weekly check-ins. Um, the NBA Finals are set. I'm personally very excited for it. I think it's a refreshing matchup. you got our generation's dynasty of the Warriors back without the super team label. And a team in the Celtics who's been building to this point for years. Um, if there are any storylines you guys are looking for, any, and then I'd also like to get our predictions. The first storyline I have personally is that this is a tough look for Alex's belief that Jason Tatum is not a good player. I, you don't think Jason Tatum? F- I didn't say he wasn't a good player. What? Just a ridiculous thing to say. I did not say that. I said I don't know if he's warranted to be a top five player in the league. And Grant took that as I don't think he's good. Sounds like you're stupid, Grant. <laughs> well, I got you worked up like I Evan, is he a top five player? I'll give him that title. All right. I get super biased by playoff runs. Like that I had Devin Booker penciled in his top five last year after their run they went on. I was like, yep, for sure. Grant's flash guy. But anyways, you were, well, we it's were talking not a bad Kevin, look for me. He we were talking Kevin Durant anything, versus yeah. Tatum. Yeah, I took Durant over Tatum and Grant took Tatum. So, And I said because Tatum swept him in this playoff series. I was like, yeah, well, but that's, probably. If that's your only reason, I'm not sure that's the best reason. We'll see. If he wins and he's dominant, then maybe he can be a top five player. That's all. I think the Warriors win in seven games. I'm taking the Michigan Michigan State connection in Poole and Draymond and obviously Steph and Clay, but I'm taking the Warriors. What do you guys think of how this series is going to play out? Well, the Celtics are big favorites. No way. That's not yeah. true at all. And favored by the computers as well. Says who? I think the war- Dude, the Warriors are minus ESPN 185. ESPN FBI says that the Celtics have an 82% chance. You hear about what you anything ESPN such says? A nerd. <laughs> no one cares about FPI. They care about what the sports book has, the money line. That's who the favorite is. The favorite is whoever I think is going to win. Golden That's State, who the favorite is. And Golden I think the Golden State, State Warriors will win. Is minus 160. They are the favorite to win the NBA Finals factually. The FPI 
is for squids. You were just well, we actually completely wrong, Alex. Hate to be that guy, just but be, the computers and wrong. the sports books, none I of those are wrong. factually correct. There's no technical favorite. Yes, really that's no where all the money that. is. They, Alex, they have more better algorithms than anything the FPI spits out. That's why they I actually hate the put FPI. I was just money. telling you guys what I saw. That's my job on this podcast. Tell you what I see. Well, you saw the wrong thing. Check You're your looking eyes. at the wrong sources. I saw ESPN tweet it today. You're using Wikipedia when we're using the actual like scholarly articles called FanDuel Sportsbook. I d- it doesn't really matter who the favorite is. It should be a good series. You got Warriors in how many? I got the Warriors in seven as well. It's biased because I'm just rooting for Draymond, really, and Steph. Evan, your thoughts on I got on Warriors it. in six. The ups and downs of, I would say, the Celtics the past couple series and them going seven as Warriors has a couple, couple extra days off, extra yeah. legs underneath them. You know, could help the Celtics in the first couple games, just more basketball rhythm recently, but I think as the series goes on, the stamina is probably isn't going to be there. I think that's a great point. I think the rest is going to help. Rest versus rust. I'm taking rest in this case uh, in the Warriors. And side. the Warriors and have before. home court advantage, I believe. Yep. Oh, yeah. Game so seven will be. See that, yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. I mean, I always, I've always liked the Warriors. I like Clay. Have a Clay jersey. It's cool to see that they're back. And that stat that was going around, they've never lost a Western conference series under Kerr like when uh, all the guys have been healthy like you you forget but they just haven't lost when their team's healthy Um, which was a nice reminder and then what six out of eight years in the finals pretty pretty did the Warriors have a cupcake road this year um no jaw the Mavericks, yeah, injured yeah. Game. but but that's just that's just the final. I mean, staying healthy is a huge part of it. I mean, Winning, you say this, getting there is good. Celtics, enough, Celtics probably just... aren't here if um, Chris Middleton isn't hurt the whole playoffs. I mean, they went to Agreed. seven there, and so it'll be good. I'm just excited. I think it'll be. I hope it's good because these NBA finals have been our playoffs have been atrocious thus far with all of the blowouts that we've seen. So hopefully, if it's the blowouts continue, games. I'm gonna be upset. Yeah. It's, I don't even. It's just going to be you guys are going to be locked in on Michigan State recruiting in the month of June. You already uh, are, but you're going to be more locked in. <laughs> Tomorrow is when it really gets gets going. Is it the following week though? Oh, there's a bunch of visits this weekend. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought the more was the following weekend. The five stars are coming this weekend. The third. The five, the five stars yeah. are coming. Yeah. Alex, the Detroit Tigers who are up five nothing right now on <sighs> division leading Twins. Your boycott update. Uh, I did a little bit of digging, which is just listening back to like two episodes when we made the initial initial boycott statement because we were kind of confused with the numbers. You said on the record they had to go 11 and 7 over the next 18 games. However, it gets trickier where we have to talk it out again because two games got canceled. So they've only played 16 games. Two of them got canceled. Right now, they are 7 and 7. Um, and so they have two games left t- tonight and tomorrow against the Twins to get to the 16. So if they're nine and seven, do you have to be like they have to get to eleven and seven against the Yankees, or does nine and seven cut it for you to keep watching, or have you already quit? I haven't quit yet. <clears throat> it's tough. Let's talk it's about tough. it if they get to nine. Okay, we'll rediscuss. So are we saying the boycott is full on if they lose tonight or tomorrow? Yes, boycotts uh, officially taking place if they lose. Because then that would be the, that would be the eight losses. They got to win two games to extend this no boycott a little longer. Because then, if it gets to nine, seven, I was already looking. The Yankees are on the schedule, and they're going to wax us. So then if the they somehow get to be, eleven and seven and win their next four games, then I'm all in. Not even a middle ground. You're just no. <laughs> I'll be all in. Okay. Buy a few jerseys, yeah, and I'll wear them around every day. We got Austin Meadows and Riley Green playing for the Mud Hens tonight. So Riley Green is on the doorstep of the MLB. We so Austin Meadows, hopefully his health is getting better. Vertigo is a nasty little bug. And then Casey um, Mize is on the 60 day DL. Yeah. Got moved to that. But when? Yesterday or two days ago. Don't panic. Do oh. not panic. Evan. That's a panic a, when you no, read that. No, because guess what? It's retroactive, so it's just two more weeks. 
because he's already been on out of baseball for a while. They just did that to bring up another roster spot. So he'll be back. He but could anytime be back. you extend it, it's not a good sign. They only did it to get another player on their roster because everyone's yeah, getting hurt. He's he, been he, on the he, 10 day deal. So he's probably been on that for a month. So technically, yeah, secret. yeah, he's, he could still be close to coming back. They just, it was scary. I got the notification. I'm like, Oh my God, what happened? Is he getting Tommy John went to read a tweet? They're like, this isn't that big of a deal. Actually. It's just like two more weeks or whatever. Um, but yeah, who knows? Evan to you now, Steve. Oh, Eisenman. Jenny trots, 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 trots at, at hammer Fox two, Jennifer Hammond. What a, what a username that is. May 30th in the news dump in the middle of Memorial Day weekend. Steve Eisenman has reportedly talked to Barry Trotz about the Wings coaching Barry, vacancy Barry. per at Fridge HNIC. The next great Barry, Barry in Detroit. Who is this Fridge? Who is this Fridge? Who is Fridge? Who is this guy? Um, He's just doing his due diligence as a GM. Got to talk to everybody that's open. Um, I don't want to give away who he's Evan. talking to. This is coach speak. <laughs> Evan. Just because he talked to a guy doesn't mean he's going to happen. Oh, please, Evan. Tell us what you're really thinking. You're nervous. Well, no, not at all. Because Carolina just got eliminated. So those conversations are now happening. Oh. In Evan's head, they're happening. Are Our they Tampa happening? Bay assistant in real life? coach could happen, you know? Um, you know, I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to be worried about Trotz being the head coach until they said we're hiring Barry Trotz as the head coach. And then I'm hitting the, oh, shit, this team's going to get blown up here in a couple of days. Oh, wait, you think if they hire him, they're going to make a bunch of other roster moves? I don't think they'll make a bunch of roster moves. I don't think some of the players will receive it as positive as others. Because the reason they fired him in the Islanders is because he lost the locker room. Players didn't want to play for him. They were sick of his philosophy hmm. and how he's a he defense, cool. defense, defense, defense first. And he didn't care about scoring as much. Yes, we do need to fix the defense. Spin zones. Wow. And he took them to two conference finals in a row yeah. with a limited talent pool. COVID season. Um, Fridge NH- HNIC is Elliot Friedman, who has almost 700,000 followers as Ooh. a hockey a- reporter. So and this is this is a little scary because usually Eiserman is the most tight-lipped yeah. executive in sports, basically. You don't know anything the Red Wings are doing, but rumors are smoke, Evan. This could, be a, this could be just be a smoke signal. Nothing there. Barry. It should be a blanket. I hope not. Barry. Right. I want a younger Barry. guy so he doesn't just quit on the team in three years. Barry. Barry. All right. Well, we'll see how that plays out. Um, now to the Pistons hopping around here, passing the ball around. Alex, the hypothetical trades. I'll let you tee this up. Which one do you want to talk about first? All right. Let's start with a hypothetical trade with the Atlanta Hawks. Bob this one was John. from... Uh, this one was from that athletic article, right? James Edwards and then yeah. their beat writer. Correct. But I was not going to give anybody credit for this. I wanted to give credit. They wrote an article <laughs> about it. And they wrote that this conversation has happened. Yes. Um, may not be the most intense conversation, but the idea has been floated. Yeah, so Sorry. Bogdan Bogdanovich <laughs> and the number 16 pick in the 2022 NBA draft for Jeremy for Grant. Corey Apparently, Joseph. That works out in the uh cap situation confirmed i confirmed that kind of it, yeah i just eyeballed the tested article. it <laughs> and then uh another one they floated in that article was danilo gallinari instead of bogdan but i think bogdan's much better Ugh. so i put bogdan only bogdan, bogdan. i'm not He's taking gallinari. 90 years old yeah no. bogdan, bogdan bogdanovich in the number 16 pick evan what do you say uh age Bogdan? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, I got. I already got it. And this, I'm going to tell you. Wait, don't look it up. He's got to be young. S- his age will stun you. It'll. It might be the most. We're going to talk about doing age draft later. This is the most alarming age in this entire show. Is he in the 30s? Wait, I'll just guess. Evan. 23. He's 23. Alex. Well, based on what you said, he's either 20 or 30. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I went younger. I'll go 30. He's 29 years old, 295 oh. days. He's older than Jeremy Grant. I was stunned to read that. Contract. He looks young. So, contracts, great call, Evan. Jeremy Grant, one year left on his deal, $21 million for the year. Bogdan has essentially one year left, $18 million, but he has a player option 
to then make it the second year. And now we don't know if he'd stay in Detroit or not. So view them both one year contracts and then Bogdan could always bolt. So Bogdan's $3 million cheaper, old one year older than Jeremy Grant. Bogdan was drafted in 2012. Crazy. Didn't play in the he, NBA until doesn't 2017. He seem, doesn't he seem like he's 25? He's only been in the league five years. Yeah, that's because of those, 20, those, so. that's why. those teams that draft the foreign players and just gets rights to them. They don't come over here for another. Yeah, he played so in don't Serbia have get, and Turkey so it's for not, five years. Yes, yeah, so it's not a cap hit right then. It's not a cap until later on. Yeah. All right. Now, the last piece of information we need before you make your decision, Evan, I want to read you ESPN's current big board um, of players 13 through 20 in a draft. Because that's probably the range you'll get for okay. pick 16. Okay, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Malachi Branham. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mark Williams. No. Jeremy it's Sochan. Is Mark Williams the guard or the center? The center. center from Duke. No, no. Sochan's Jer- going 11. Well, he's Sochan at 15 is. on the big board. Baylor kid, right? Yep. Think of, uh, He's a very tall d- distributor. Kind of like a, a very poor man's Draymond Green is his count. Very poor man. <laughs> Um, cop. Not a not a shooter. No, nope, uh, s- sixteen. Ochai Ajabi of Kansas oh, fame. Evan mm. likes him. He's 17, old. He's like twenty five. Seventeen. <laughs> twenty five. He is old. He is old. That's why he's lower. Seventeen. Ty Ty Washington Jr. Freshman point guard from Kentucky. Potential. Um, eighteen. Tari Eason from LSU. Small forward. Nineteen. Point guard from Tennessee. Kennedy Chandler. Twenty. EJ Liddell, Ohio State. So that Ajabi's is your range of draft picks. So with all that information at your disposal, Evan. Um, and now Bogdan is 6'6", so he's not a power forward. He's probably a small forward. So, and Jeremy's our power forward. He's like 6'8", lengthy. So are you doing this trade or not? I, Bogdan's basically a rental. Just he's a good player to add to your team, Evan. Come on. Oh, stats for Bogdan. Sorry. I'm just adding 16 points per game lifetime. 40 percent three point. We've shooter. seen him in we've seen him in the playoffs, which is what really matters. He averages 14 points per game through his career. That's over two seasons, but the, the year they made their run was his big year. He had three games in the Eastern Conference Finals with 20 points or more. Three point shooting percentage career 40, and 38.6. 38-ish. And now the downside is last year, knee problems, injuries. Oh, um, well, then I'm out. See ya. <laughs> Hanging up the phone. <laughs> and Evan's out. I'm not paying and $18 million. Doc this, with Jeremy Grant paying nice. him $18 million. The pick would be nice, but I'm not paying for somebody that's going to ride the bench and just take money from me and then just bail on me for a year. But Evan, Jeremy Grant will just walk in free agency next year, and then you get nothing. That's why you don't have him on your team. <laughs> That's why this trade is offered. I, you're not gonna have. What if you? What if no? Be, he's not right, gonna fine. be on the team next year. Perfect segue into our next trade then. Because hmm. Grant doesn't get into what on, he's saying. Did you want to answer it, Alex, or do you want to? Just I talk would about, do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Fun. I'm not doing it because of the injury problems. If you're here, you're getting here to compete and try to get into the play. Jeremy Grant was injured all last season. Jeremy Grant does have injury problems as well. This team wasn't True. making the playoffs if it fell in their lap. Next year's team probably isn't either, Evan. There's the a better chance. I, yeah, there's, there has to, there better be a better chance to get it next year. Um, the reason I wouldn't want to do it is because I again keep thinking about how unathletic our team can potentially be. Mm. Given like if we draft oh, Keegan Murray, if you just if you get rid of Jeremy Grant, who's an athletic guy, and you bring Keegan Murray and Bogdan Bogdanovich, it just makes me worried about our overall foot speed, for lack of a better term, on our team. But I do see Alex's point where you're saving three million. He, we know he can play. We know he and the biggest stage in the Eastern Conference Finals. He can. He, he's a baller. He's got some. He's got some dog in him. He's not soft. He's a. He's a tough foreign player. I would say injury problems. Yes, Jeremy Grant injury problems. Yes, and like I guess the biggest point in my mind is I don't think we're gonna be extending Jeremy Grant. Uh, nope. So we're just gonna let him walk. I don't know if this is the best offer you can ever get, but I also like that draft pool there of the players i read i think there's an athletic guy you can find there so i think i would do it and that might just be dumb because i just want to see a change in this team and sometimes jeremy grant shoots the ball um more than i'd like when he has Sadiq bay open in the corner and whatnot um and i do like jeremy grant don't get me wrong and he also had a good bubble in the playoffs but i think i would do it 
just for something new. I would just much rather get something for Jeremy Grant than have him walk for nothing. And then You're also going to hey, get a young player that you might be able to develop into another Sadiq Bay type of guy. And then, you know, also if um, Bogdan plays well and he likes the culture, he could take into that player option and then you got him at a good price for one more year and then you can let him go when he's in his 30s. I don't know. He'd be a good bench piece on a good playoff team. I think he'd start for us. I'm saying in, in the future if he were to resign oh. or something. Killian would go to the bench where he belongs Nothing right now. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing You'd have wrong Cade, with that. Cade, Bogdan, and Sadiq. Some floor spacing mm-hmm. for him. And then whoever you draft in the center. Um, okay, now the next one, Alex. A, bu- a little Butler Thailand. So, no. Pistons <laughs> get the 13th pick, the 15th pick, both in the 2022 NBA draft. And Butler pride Gordon Hayward for just Jeremy Grant. Now, before we continue. Since Evan's going to ask the questions, Gordon Hayward's cap hit 30 mil and then 31.5 mil in 23 24. So you got two years left. It's a two year deal. 30 and 31 million cap hits. I think that does drop 15% if he is traded to a team not named the Hornets. So a little less than that, maybe. But I also don't know how that works. Yeah. All right. Two young guys. And how he's and really taken old, on right? a contract, basically, yeah. A he is not young. It's yeah, he's 32. And he is clearly on the back end. But the Hornets paid him a good jillion dollars, so what a move by them. Uh Oh, I was looking at what trade kicker means. I can't figure it out, so yeah, disregard I, that. I just I would. Um, I it would do this something. one before I would do the bow. The other one, oh, really? I would just so like it's the two for one. I see the two draft picks instead of the one draft pick. Um, but you're you're taking a serious cap hit. I said I still would not do this. Um, what's Grant's cap hit again? Jeremy Grant's twenty one. So it's a so nine. Is, it's we're yeah. adding nine million dollars to our cap, and then another thirty that you're the locked f- into for the next correct. year. Correct. Next year would be a pain in the butt because you're trying to bring in talent this year. I, yeah. The only reason I would think about it is solely because I'm going to get two draft picks, yeah. and they're higher and than have, combined have three total. You're, they're higher than uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Atlanta's that was offered in the 16th pick. Yeah. You, could you could also it, you could package, the, package those three and move up. Um, Sacramento kind of wants out. You could package the 13th and 5th pick to move up a little bit, so you never know. That's the only reason I look at it, but the cap, I just can't look at that cap and be $30, $31 million and do anything about it. I can't do it. Um, yeah. The I would picks consider tickle me. It. it tickles my fancy, but still, no. I would consider it for one reason. If Gordon Hayward has a productive first half of the season before the trade deadline, a contender would certainly be interested in him to try to make a push. So you might be able to dump that on if he has a really good first half of the season, but he is extremely not durable. He's played half the season the last three seasons and then played one game two years before that. So it's a pretty risky move. You're probably just going to absorb a bunch of money, and you probably will play half the games or less. But you get two draft picks. I would say points and rebounds wise, he kind of is just a Jeremy Grant, but more expensive. Like you look at his production, he still has decent profiles. Scored 16 points per game last year, then 20, then 18. But like, yeah, he's playing 40 to 50 games. He's not playing. I think this this would signal to me more that we're not we're taking a long time in our rebuild because this is kind of yeah. this is what teams that are trying to go slow do taking on salary dumps. So selfishly, because I want to see this thing progress faster, I would rather do the Bogdan deal. But also, this deal gives you a chance to build like a un not unbelievable a really strong core that would probably be tough to pay all at once eventually. But you'd have. Some really promising, like young, 
young um, prospects be, you on your look team. Look like the Celtics in four or five years. Everyone could, that they drafted was could basically keep two. everyone. Yeah, they kept th- they, because, they keeping three of them because if of the three picks you get, you're I mean I don't know. Sadiq can turn out to be a solid two person, but you could find your Jalen Brown if you get three shots at it, yeah. and then you have Cade, who's your Jason Tatum, and then you could have a little good situation going on. So it's intriguing. It's just patience would have to be displayed by us fans yep i would consider it it would just all depend on if i thought my team was good enough to make playoffs and make push now if not yeah it seems like a good deal honestly. and they'll know like based on their free agent talks if they think they're going to go get a guy that's going to make them contend now that they'd be like all right maybe well, we i saw a rumor today says that the pistons were interested in deandre ayton and uh the robinson from the knicks yeah and then the other two guards are Brunson and Sexton, and they want to sign a, they want to sign a guard and a forward this off season. Yeah. Weaver coming. If you uh, if you strike out and miss on all the free agents, welcome Gordon Hayward to town. <laughs> I think I do think the first one has more legs because I think this other one was a Bleacher Report one, right? And I always just I'm like, eh. yeah, I don't know how much legs this second one had, but just yeah, something to consider. The Hornets, if they want to keep uh, Miles Bridges, are going to have to get rid of Gordon Hayward. So, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm oh, sure they'd one... much rather have Miles than Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward will play for the oh, yeah, bum, so. bum Lakers. <laughs> He'd fit yeah. in there. Um, one very last thing that was kind of late breaking, so I didn't put it in the doc, but just quick thoughts on Musa Diabate and Caleb Houston both staying in the draft. Oh, I only saw Musa today. I did not see Caleb, Caleb. is gone. Um, two open scholarships now for Juwan Howard to fill if he'd like to. So maybe some portal action. There is late smoke already. This is two in the weeds, but Joey Baker from Duke. I was looking. He's following some Michigan players. Um, Ew. he screams like a classic white Michigan villain. He sucks. That, um, he's a shooter. He doesn't get to play a lot. Um, he sucks. You guys are how, getting Amani. Good for you guys. How would Alex? How do you know Joey Baker sucks? I've seen him play basketball for Duke. He sucks. He's played in like, yeah, exactly. He plays like ten. He plays like ten minutes a game. Yeah, he's butt. And he's a thirty-eight percent career three-point shooter. What on six attempts in his career? <laughs> no, he shoots like about seventy a year. He doesn't need to play though. You never know with Duke guys. You don't know what they're gonna be because like they have like five draft picks this year. Back to the um, Michigan thing. No. I'm not surprised you basically told me this like two weeks ago. No, nah, when the season ended, you told me this happened. I'd be pretty stunned because I thought for sure one of them's coming back. And I thought I'd be Caleb Houston based on the buzz I had seen. Um, and it also makes me a little depressed inside to think about all the the nights, um, the conversations Alex I would have in this apartment talking about Caleb Houston versus Max Christie. And boy, were they a flash in the pan in our lives. I mean, that might have been the most overhyped like little. I saw someone tweet. That today, like uh, one of the Michigan State accounts was joking about that. And then one of the comments was like, yeah, it sure was. It was not Nick Stauskas, Scary Harris. It was not that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I mean, this kind of sucked because these guys, we had such high hopes watching their highlight tapes, looking at their college game or high school games and dud. Yeah, let's be honest. Like, neither level. of them were good. No, not like great, but they would have had both, I think, pretty solid sophomore years because that's you when have college hoped players they'd take a jump. But they're betting on themselves, so good for them. Like we could have had some Go good your duels, bags. so it kind of stinks. Um, Musa, but it's a good little, decision. Little worrisome, I would say, for uh, Michigan basketball to fill too. I'd like them to find some some athletes, some maybe a guy that can start come in. Um, How many players do you guys have on scholarship? We, we have, have two open. I just know we have two open. Oh, because we have nine players. I love Pete Nance. Pete Nance would be sweet. He is back, coming back to college, but he was recently crystal balled to Gonzaga. So it's going to be tough for Michigan to Good get fit. in that. And Aaron I guess John Rothstein, not to get into the weeds of the CBB, but John Rothstein says the Big Ten runs through Bloomington, Indiana as of today, they which I find laughable. Roster. But I just can't picture it happening. And a really good recruiting class. <laughs> can't picture it happening, TJD. but... Good for them. This is probably going to be the biggest offseason in that program's history. Um. All right. Draft time. Snake draft time, guys. Let me get the random number generator up. Today, we'll go opposite order. Evan will be one in the number generator. Alex will be two. And I'll be three. 
generate two. Alex, you get the pick again. Damn. First. <laughs> Congrats on Kate Cunningham. Whoa. Uh, next spin. Three. So I was three. Yeah. Um, do I want to take the turn? Is this ter- is the turn strategic in this draft? Sorry. One sec. Look at my big board. I already crossed off Kate Cunningham. Um, sure. You know what? I'm going to go second. I'm gonna go, I think there's a guy worth taking second. We'll see how it works out, though. Um, okay, so then, I guess, to reintroduce this, this is the 25 and under Detroit athletes draft. Current athletes, 25 or under, um, from all four teams. Probably based on how good we think they're going to be. Just let's rip it. Alex? Cade Cunningham, number one overall. Dude, wow, what a surprising pick. Wow, Good that was like you, Brad. Man. It's like Brad Holmes the last two years with his first pick, just yeah. running that card in. That's it's a, like him picking a Bloody Mary, I guess. What's there to even think about? <sighs> yeah, also, we touched Got on that. Evan that. dominated. Evan dominated that draft. It felt so good just to read to everybody just be like, yeah. <laughs> I kind of felt annoying just a little inside uh, podcasting. I was... Like just retweeting all the responses because I want people to see it, but I felt annoying because they started piling in. I was like, no, I'm going to retweet every single one. So it's just cluttering people's feed of just names. They're like, oh, what are they talking about? And then it worked. Though <laughs> Happy worked. one guy said my name. One guy said I won four out of the five categories. So maybe oh, him and it? I should gra- yeah. grab a beer sometime. <laughs> <laughs> What's the fifth one though? Yeah. Um, okay. My pick, Evan, I'm sorry. I'm taking Mo Cider of the oh. Detroit Red Wings. I think he is – I don't think they've announced Rookie of the Year yet. He's in contention. He should win it. And I think whenever you have that, um, I thought he you got to take him. I don't know if they've announced him yet. I don't think they've they called announced her? him. I think I would see it on Twitter if he didn't win because people are going to be up in arms if he I thought it. I did see that. Someone freaking out about it. No, Raymond didn't get put in it. They oh, There's right, a 35-year-old right, right. rookie for the Maple Leafs. That's yeah, basically, yeah. All right, so I'm taking. I'm going hockey. Wow, well, good, good pick, man. The next Lidstrom, hopefully. Yeah, um, then it'll be worth it. I have back to back here. Yep. Yeah, okay, Ju- some juicy names left. Yeah, tons of off. good names. So, still. um, I'm gonna take Lucas Raymond. Back to back hockey. Yeah, so Red Wings would have thought. Be on my team. Just some uh, puck, puck heads. I'm battling in between who I want my next pick. It's only like four guys on the Red Wings under 25 no. that are I'm not going to get. Oh, I'm not gonna get either of them if I pass on one of them. So depressing. Yeah, you're definitely not. Well, I don't know if you'd. Pick, maybe you would pick one. There's so many names. I'm looking at one. There's team so many that people have no at. idea that what direction you're gonna go. But there is one team I think that you have to scoop up if you want someone good. I'm gonna take a Monra. <laughs> what a pick. I have to because he's not going to come back around to me. So I have to take a Monra. I have his jersey, so it would be criminal if I didn't. I think he's like, I think it's a great pick. And I was struggling where to put him in my tiers because I wouldn't say he's like, um, cause the draft just happened. So he's not like the flashiest guy right now yeah. in the organization. But like of his rookie season, I mean, he's up there with the guys on that team's list that have shown the most already. So I think that's a great pick. Back to me. Okay, well, I'm going to take the guy. I only had three guys starred right now. There's going to be some recency bias, so I'm betting on this guy. I'm taking Tarek Skubal. No. Um, wow. Who, who I think. Asterisk there. He's 25. He like is 196 <laughs> days or something. <laughs> yes. He's at the 25 right there. Um, I think this guy could win a Cy Young. In his uh, I, had him, I had him higher you look than at, uh, the rest of the pitchers. You look at. Um, he's earned it. You look at his strikeout counts, and he's pitching tonight again. He's given up no runs, from what I've seen. Um, is he he's, actually? He's, is he the one pitching tonight? Yeah, yeah, he was on the mound tonight. I mean, he is. Tigers just tweeted have, some stat about him. He's probably having a stat line. Let me go look him up now. This will help my draft pick. Dude, he has to make the All Star game. Cabrera Seven, probably didn't make it because just all the pitchers. Ooh, Torkelson's not having a good game. Oh, he's done for the night. He's seven innings, two hits, zero earned runs, one walk, six Ks. So low on Ks, but two hits in a seven innings. I mean, how about that? Two, yeah, he might win a Cy Young jokes. one day. Okay, back to Alex with two picks on a turn here. 
uh, with Cade as his hoss. That just feels good to say. You got Cade Cunningham. I have Cade, and I'm just going to hate the rest of my draft because I might be drafting on solely potential. I think I know who you're taking right here. I don't think you do. I'd be stunned if you didn't take Dude, this guy to, on I'm one of your two picks. Up. Holy shit, I'm going to start You think I'm going to take a football player here? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 of the two, I think you have to, but I think you know it's risky, but you love this guy. <laughs> No spoilers, but Evan said that you could have done a drinking game during our draft show. Yeah, I'll take Jameson. Fine. Yeah, you have to. Bro. Well, I you get two picks. Don't you get back to back? Yeah. 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 I wanted to wait because I didn't think anyone would take him, but you know. I would take him just to spite you. Yeah. Um. Do I even? Alex, I didn't even have him wing? in like my top tier list because I knew I, I figured you were going to take him. I also didn't know you would have the first pick. I mean, it's tough because you had to take Cade. But. Yeah, well, have to. I mean, it's a blessing. Uh, do I take a Red Wing, Evan? Do I? What do you think? I'm this would take, be controversial. I'm going to take Casey Mize, also 25 years old. Uh, now, that's the opposite of recency bias. I'm going right to go now. with a guy that's, that's a, going out on a limb. Bit. Yeah. That's a go. That's a show your faith in Casey's recovery timeline right now. Yeah, I almost went a little more nuts, but I'll try to keep that toned down. Um. Okay. Middle back to me. This is going to be the most boring pick of this entire draft. Uh, it's I'm literally going to take your stalwart football player. That's going to be a Hall of Fame left tackle one day. Oh, Panay Sewell. Guy on my list. Then I dip into the football realm. Now, maybe I he'll just be thought right. it'd be way too boring. It's so boring, but it's so good. And now he he had some, he had his up and downs in his rookie season. Um, the PFFs in the world ended up loving him, and we saw enough highlights from this guy that he is going to be a monster. And I've heard, I read some o- reports from OTAs that he is he's looking good in the off. Like he added a bunch of leg muscle, so he's going to be moving people. We read the same articles. Yeah, <laughs> same Twitter account. Um, Evan, two picks on the turn. You got some chance to build some depth uh, here. I'm oh, yeah. worried about who I'm going to have left. I'm taking Spencer Torkelson. Showing faith in the rookie. I like it. Years old, played like shit this year. Um, above 200 now. Good for him. Yeah. God, what a gross. He had back to back three hit games to get there. I'm still both my pitchers. Evan, there's a guy. I mean, your guy is still on this board. I just don't know. Ew. That would be oh, a guy. gross, disgusting pick. I don't know, who you're, t- I don't know who you're talking about. I don't think I'm going to take him. I am not unless I'm forced to. I might have missed a guy. I don't know who you're talking about. It's one of those, like, he's 25, guys. Hockey player? Unless his birthday has changed. I don't know. I, oh, I know wow. who you're talking about, Grant. We've definitely tipped pitches now. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't basically- look that deep into the... <laughs> Evans, we're Evans on second base right now, and Alex and I are pitcher and catcher, and I'm just flashing like, one sign to him. Like, notably he's said really, on this podcast that this guy is not as good as he. Yeah, is. this guy is 25 years old, 306 days. He is he is walking the border. Is next month. He's walking the border of what's eligible for this draft, but he still would count. He played hockey, you know. Plays hockey. He played at oh. Michigan. Born and watered for Michigan. I didn't. I I thought he was older than twenty five. I didn't even look so into him. <laughs> but now, as Evans like, well, where, now he's doing the math. Like, where do I rank him in my tier list? Yeah, I thought he was well over. I mean, he's a captain of the Detroit <laughs> Red Wings. <laughs> <laughs> you have two Red Wings, Evan. I don't care. I'm the hockey guy here. He's the hockey. I, I'm taking him. him. I'm taking him. I'm taking Dylan Larkin. Good. Saves me the pain of having to take him later. Alex and I get to assist their hockey style for snapping the puck around. Yep. To get that get one some there. apples right there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think the wings are done. Yeah. Um, There's one guy that I might have to take just so I have a red wing so people think I'm diverse. But he's not good. Uh, I don't um, have to be taken. Okay. This is a tough – This dude, does Grant go homer? Doesn't Evan have two picks? He took That's a torque. torque. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, Mize is gone. Definitely not. Um, I can't say his name. That's a spoiler. Um, 
God, the, this list is getting gross. Take someone that I don't want to cramp. I'm worried about my last two picks. Um, I'm just thinking in terms of how good it feels when people say your name when you post a graphic of like, yeah, that's a great draft, and I know this guy will do it based on the blue wall. I'm going to take oh, Aiden Hutchinson. no. I was Bummer. thinking of Max. Wow. Damn. I didn't even have him on my list. Evan. Evan. That's a little ridiculous. <laughs> Number two pick. You have to have to God. On the list. Swear to God. <laughs> Hasn't played a game yet, though, so. Correct. We'll see. I'm going to puke in my final two. The problem was there were some other guys that really kind of kind of wanted. I got some names still left on my list that, you know. I got three, I got three names I want. I got no, four. I got four. I got three I'm going names. full, full potential here. We have seen nothing from this player at all other than minor league baseball. Oh, you're taking Riley Green. Okay. I'm taking Riley Green here. Yes. You son of a gun, you. That's a that's a hype pick because he's coming to the show soon. Yeah. And is. then I'm going to take someone. Hmm. Okay. While you think, I'll buffer. I saw a tweet. Now, they said, yes, it was a double or single A ball in his rehab start, but Riley Green had a um, hit a pitch with an exit velocity that was like higher than anyone that's registered on the Tigers professional roster this year. <laughs> And I was like, let's get that guy to the show. Yeah. Just move him up already. <laughs> He's going to steal bases and just be a five tool. I said beast. middle of June. Check, check the tapes. I said middle of your, June. Your timeline was right. <laughs> you were. It you might were be right. like a week earlier just because he's already in the mud hands, but June. Uh, so fifth and final pick. This guy has shown some flashes. It's a pretty not flashy position, though. 24 years old. Anybody, anybody know who I'm talking about? I have a guess, but I don't want to say it in case I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm not guessing. Hawkinson, TJ Hawk Daddy. TJ Hawkinson on my list. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good pick. Yeah. Not good flashy, pick but has the potential to be pretty good still. He's still a young kid. I mean, in the, in the league where tight ends are becoming more premium, he is – Top six uh, for sure, and he's probably going to outlast like when Kelsey retires. He'll move up into that elite tier and towards with the end of his career. Better wideouts this year, he should be more open. I want so. this guy to follow me. Oh wow, Evan! All right, my last pick. I have two guys. I'll walk you through. I got two guys that I think are the right picks. I have two guys on my list that are not crossed off yet. And then I have two other guys that are like. Grant's guys like you're my guys in fantasy football I have oh. two that are my guys I don't have where it's like my list, I, my list was short I have five do guys I, left on the list and I hate all of them do, I like one do, of them do I take the guy that I feel best about or do I take I'm going to take the guy who I think will actually make big moments in a big playoff game I'm going to take Sadiq Bay as my fifth pick he's one of my good pick, pick. Good one pick. of the two I had left I think he'll be making big shots in an NBA Finals game in our lives, so I got to take him. That was between him or Hawk. Wow. But the Lions are going to win the Super Bowl. So. Oh, and I got a piston now, so that was huge. That's a good draft, Grant. I feel good about this looking at it. Evan, final I like pick. All our drafts. Final I think it's a no-brainer. Um, oh, no-brainer. Uh, I don't know about that. Hasn't been really mentioned. I'm double-checking. I already looked it up. Double-checking his age. Um. Yeah, I'm taking DeAndre Swift. Nice pick. That was who I was between. We yeah. had the same two guys, Grant. It was DeAndre Swift and Sidney Bay. I'm taking Swift. Um. Still, he's only 23. A lot of buzz to his third off year. Season. His arms look jacked in some of the pictures Unit I've seen. He's gonna be cut. all over hard knocks. Are you worried about the positional value of running backs in the NFL with this pick? I'm not. I think he is a. Dan Campbell guy, and I think he's going to get such a second contract from the Lions. I don't think it's going to be outrageous money. It's going to be probably a little high, but it's the NFL nowadays where it's like, okay, he's like just like the next guy in line. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also wouldn't be shocked if I see them moving on. I mean, Brad Holmes has come from a system where they just have CJ Anderson, who's a plug and play kind of guy. But it's all about DeAndre's health. Just stay healthy late into the November and. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Um. All right. Honorable mentions of guys that were close. 
I just had guys big... written down that were under 25, really. Yeah, me too. Matt my Manning. biggest, my, yeah, he's, he, he's shown, I like him. It's just the injury's tough right now. Yeah. Um, and he's not as good, like, buzz wise as Mize. I wrote down two names for you, Alex, as a joke for the Tigers. I wrote down Daz Cameron and Akil Badil. I wrote down Akil Badil because he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, no one took Killian. We're smart. Thank you guys for doing that. Down, but mm-hmm. I did consider writing. I did him not down. write them down. I wrote. I basically wrote down everyone on twenty five or under. So then I had Isaiah Stewart and Marvin Bagley. I have Bagley's under twenty five. Wow. Bagley's twenty three. Evan. Yeah, that is pretty he's crazy. Probably got drafted when he was 19, 18, So that's probably why. What about Philip Zadina? No. Well, he's Dude, probably he's shipped out. Oh, Grant, your guy. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't have him on your list. DJ Chark. Oh, t- DJ Chark. And my I last my guy was, um, yeah, Chark is 25, 251 days. And my last my guy was Jeff Okuda. I thought about throwing him a life preserver, I figured, but I decided I not to. Taking, I, thought you were I hoped you Okuda. did. I would have crucified that pick. I couldn't. I mean, if I want to win a draft, I can't take Jeff Okuda um, in this. You just can't do it. But I think that was fun. I think the graphic will turn out sweet, get people all like juiced up for the future because that's really, again, all we have to look forward to right now. Um, all right. Our last mm-hmm. few questions, listener cues. I'll just rip them off. If a high schooler talks shit to you in the gym, is it acceptable to put them in their place? Not physical, obviously. Thanks for clarifying that, whoever wrote this in. I was like, Alex, you, yeah, you, you have to you write this one for yourself. Do you have runs with kids in the gym, it feels like, all the time? Uh, definitely cannot beat a high schooler up, assuming this person's an adult. You're saying you couldn't or you shouldn't? <laughs> Depends. You should not, though. Um, You could, like, say something to them if they're talking directly to you. I don't see why that would be a big deal. I would have liked to know what the, the actual context of exchange was. Like, did this kid just walk up to you and say, like, that's weak weight, bro? Tiny arm <laughs> or, like, what <laughs> happened? Like, because then you can get, you can say some mean things. But, like, I don't know what is, like, who talks smack in the gym? Well, that guy did to you for looking at your phone. Yeah. I guess I did not There's play a lot in this place. Testosterone booming in a gym. So people get crazy. Evan, what are you doing if a, if a high schooler says... I'm, I'm uh, talking back. I'm saying something to him. No place to say anything to me. And, like, what are you going to do in that situation? Like, feel free, have at it. Then I'm going to say something back. Do we think this is, like, a older kid going back to his high school? He kind of knows the high schoolers thing? Or do we be, like, do we a think- college kid in the summer since everyone just got back. Because that's different. Because then you kind of... Because then maybe the high school kids are roasting you, saying, like, oh, we lift more than you and you play division, you play college sports. Like, that's a little different dynamic. If this is, that, like, a YMCA, a Planet Fitness, and it's high school age kid talking smack to you randomly, then, yeah, I think you are in every right to just be, like, say some mean things back to this person. Just imagine me in high school or you guys in high school. We're not just going to randomly talk to a person in the gym. This no, just this is happen. a good point. Kids are too cocky these days. Yeah. Absurd. Fold themselves. Yeah, you can definitely, I wasn't saying anything. You can definitely put them in their place with words. I also couldn't like bench 135, so I wouldn't, I can't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. The last one, our next one. Power rankings. Choose one. Pontoon, speedboat, jet ski. I mean, this is an easy pick for me. This is pontoon's number one. It's not even close nowadays. At this age, I, I was going to say. At this age, pontoon, now man. that There's we're no over doubt. 21, it is pontoon. Go to the sandbar and just see how many you can put back. You get drunker on the water faster. Proven science. Um, I'm a this pontoon guy pain. now. Speed yeah, pontoon for me. Speed, I don't need to get on like an, a speedboat ever again in my life, I don't think. I'm certainly just not doing like, water tubing's sports fun. anymore. Yeah, it is. Tubing's fun, I think. I, I would. Somebody asked her, hey, do you want to go tubing this weekend? I would say yes instantly. Yes. Agreed. I might say something really stereotypical that could backfire on me because I'm not the biggest boat lake guy. I mean, I, you know, socially go to them a few times a year with friends, never lived on one. But I feel like at our age, um, if you're like a speedboat and jet ski guy, you're kind of kind of a jerk or probably a doucher that just wants to show off and doesn't like actually have fun, just wants to take chicks on laps around the lake. Whereas the pontoon guy is like the lovable guy that everyone wants to hang around and like you have the most fun on the lake. 
Hey, Jet Skiing is still fun. Yeah, it hasn't I'm not saying, gotten No, I'm not saying it's not fun. Worse. No, but I'm but, saying... But... It's a little stereotypical own, to if say If, if, if that's it, all you if, own, and yes. you can clearly afford the others, and you're choosing Speedboat and Jet Skiing, you don't have kids, then it's weird. If you have if you're only going, kids, Speedboat and Jet Skiing makes sense. Because you're just like if you're going okay, let's just let's just hypothetically say it's like July Fourth and the Irish Hills, and we're all going out the lake, okay? And like you just show up with a jet ski and like float around the sandbar and want to take people on rides. That's not that fun at all. That's just like showing off, like wanting to take chicks out on spins on your jet ski. Bring the pontoon boat, get your speakers going, pass out the drinks, have people on the boat in the water. That's the most fun experience on the lake. Yeah, it, like I said, it's all age dependent. A kid. 12 years old isn't going to want to go sit at the sandbar because I can tell you I never wanted to do that. I said RH. Right. I'm just this saying. Is you right now, Alex. You yeah, just got I a said pontoon. House. The first thing you're buying is what? Probably a pontoon yes. if I could afford one, which I My could. pontoon's going to have there's a. There's used pontoons out there, Alex. You can rummage around. Well, if just all our friends pull our money together, we can get a lake house and buy a pontoon boat. Yeah, like an American pie. Yeah. Not the pontoon. Idea. Only stipulation, the pontoon has to be a double decker where the top's like a, you can jump off from in deep water. Deal. Need that. But there's some horror stories of people breaking their necks doing that. Well, we'll be responsible. We'll make sure we study our lake map. Mm-hmm. Know the topography. Pontoon um, for this age. Are you guys going to be attending games this fall? Football games. Games? Yeah. Yes. Football games? Yes. We probably won't be as crazy as last year of all the away games that I personally attended. That was a heck of a run you were on last year, Evan. <laughs> That'll um, go down in history. However, home games, yes, I will be there. Alex uh-huh. and I will have season tickets together. Assuming we get them, yes. yes. I'm allowed to go to the big house now, so that's potential. Oh, yeah. Good. Congrats, man. Feels good. Yeah. I might make my return to the big house. <laughs> Lions games. Maybe that was included in this discussion. Nah. Are yeah, the boys going to go watch the Eagles pound us again? <laughs> Probably not week one, but potentially I would say. I'm um, sure Larry the Legend might hook us up for one game. They will see what the demand is at the workplace for the tickets. But yeah, they're, they're on the table. Um, next one. In school, did any of you guys get D's? So just... <laughs> So in high school, these nuts. Yeah, in high school. <laughs> yes, college. Yes, retaking classes. Yes. So we know did this you is a these nuts fail? joke. Yeah. Did you guys see? Um, when you put the form, the person wrote a bunch of spaces and then put these nuts. So I was like, I'm gonna see if I can get you guys to fall for it. Oh, I didn't even see that. The I way you said these the and you were smirking, I thought it was a joke. Damn it! I can't believe it. I got. I just went right into I it, did. which I respect. So yeah, uh, high question. school. No D, no D's nuts. Uh-huh. <laughs> College, yeah, I, I got a D or two. This is a good question to actually use if you want to if you want to get a D's nuts one off. Point? That's a good way to do it. A one point is a D. I would assume so. I mean, zero is an F. <laughs> one five. What are we thinking about one five? D plus, C minus. What it depends on what kind of teacher you're feeling. All right. So I'm hovering in the D's nuts territory on a on a class. <laughs> 2.0 is so like you you just passed with C minus like you're like you're 70%. Nah, 2.0 that's a C minus. You're yeah. you're, you're <laughs> flying these colors there. I just love the idea of the person who asked this like actually sitting through and listening to He's us. Like, oh wait, they're it. actually answering the question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To end the show, uh, I guess that we have to do a, a pessimistic one. note. Well, it'll be a pessimistic question, but we can make it positive. Thanks, um, Wyatt. When will when will you guys get real? <laughs> and realize that Detroit sports are doomed for eternity and stop the preseason hysteria year after year from you know who. Hey, question, think- Wyatt. Uh, do you want us to stop doing the podcast? Is that what you're saying? No, Wyatt wants the hate talk. No. Evan, or do you, you want, want us to still abuse our teams? I don't think I ever can until like we are like a, expecting like quality, like teams year in and year after out like we should make the playoffs we should make the playoffs like as soon as we get to that point like this whole preseason last year is all we got because it's the only hope we have to yeah, answer the I question th- specifically will i get real absolutely not i think i might not get real. If, i live uh, in the moment kind of, <laughs> i'm a preseason hype live in Ohio. god 
of what what Evan said was a good point. Like I could see myself getting really dark if we then get good, but then have gross playoff collapses. We're like, okay, we're never actually going to win anything. It's still better than that. Would now, be awesome but, to talk about. But we've lived through the dark ages of probably our lives in Detroit sports, so I find it hard that it's going to get like much worse and we're doomed. Um, but it could, it could definitely get darker in the moment um, with collapse. Like thinking about my college team when Michigan lost in 2016 to Ohio State, I probably would have told you right then this team will never win anything in their lives. This this program is doomed because i just laid in a bed for like eight hours after that and didn't move so it could get worse in the moment but that still would be an improvement from where we're at we're actually watching playoff games and look we just did the under 25 draft do you see all that talent come on it's happening evan went one for one with an rbi today yes. things are looking up yes. i'm still 25 and younger put me on the yes. list we, put evan still, on the we list. were all eligible for the list <laughs> Yeah, but I think you could start. You could take Zach Short's place in Toledo. You might not miss a beat. Oh, God. Uh, that was mean to say. I didn't mean that. Zach Short's a quality ball But player. Evan has said many times he is a bad hitter. So they, he has to be a but, phenomenal fielder. Well, now he's hitting his study. athletic prime. Yes. As Alex would say, you're just not hitting your athletic prime. You know, 25 you're is your athletic prime. And Evan's really a switch hitter, so he can bring that to the table. Correct. Bunts. Just bunt they put the shift time. on Evan. And he'd slap hit <laughs> the third base and get on. Just bunt every batting appearance. M- more, much more speed than Miguel Cabrera down the line. Oh, yeah, I'm hustling everything out. How was your speed these days, Evan? Did you test still, it out today. No, still got didn't some wheels. I stole a base. Stole second. Did you? Did you slide? Yeah, I did. Ripped a hole in my one pair of baseball pants that I have nowadays. <laughs> got a little thunderstorms here, so it was a little muddy in the base areas. Mm. Yeah, it's always scary. Yeah. It, if you haven't slid in a while too, it's like, oh, I forgot how to do this. We had a couple guys head. slide head first before me, and they just oh. came up all mud, just mud everywhere. So I kind of late slide, kind of need it, and was like way past second base and just put my hand on it. I haven't slid into a basin since I was twelve. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> I think we need to get a video of oh. you doing that. Alex, we um we slip and slid at camp, oh, so right. we all got used right. to it. And I and that was scary. When I did up for my the first hip. time. Yeah, yeah. Just All right, for two weeks. Yeah, that, was really <laughs> that is tonight's show. Show seventy four. Right in an hour and a half. That is beautiful timing. Um, at shot of ms on all social platforms for clips, snake draft graphics, all that stuff. Like it, comment, get your votes in. Whatever you want to do, interact, share it with a friend. How to listen? Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube. Rate, review it, subscribe to it, follow it, send the links to your friends. Um, let's get some reviews going. I feel like we had a lot in the beginning. Let's get some more reviews going. Tell your friend, like, hey, make a fake account on Apple. Leave a review. And then, as always, like this week, submit any questions you want answered when we throw out our tweet. You can use the form throughout the week. It's live all the time. But So if someone comes to you on like a Monday, you're like, I want to ask them a question, just put it in there. But um, when we round up the troops for the questions, go ahead and submit them. And with all that being said, cheers to the end of episode 74. Cheers. Cheers. To the Arrows Classic. Come on, watch some youth baseball. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I love that. Good to cheers, too. Cheers are going to see Top Gun tomorrow. Highway to the danger zone. I want to put that at the end of this show, but it might get copyrighted. Danger zone. <laughs>